As the timer operator, there are a lot of nuances in the rules that can make the difference between a no call and a penalty costing us time. If the devil is in the details, we're getting out our pitchfork and flame retardant chaps this week on the firing line. Previously on the firing line, we covered the penalty situation where a shooter engages the rifle targets, gets lost, and discards the rifle with one still on the carrier. We'll leave a link to that video below in the description. With that situation, we focused on the minor safety penalty for leaving a live round in the carrier of the rifle when it was discarded, along with the miss for the unfired round. However, things are just a bit different when dealing with the pistols. Before we get too deep, let's review a couple of rules. Misses are five second penalties. Revolver, rifle, and shotgun targets must be engaged with the appropriate type of firearm. A miss is defined as the failure to hit the appropriate target type using the appropriate type of firearm and includes each unfired round. Inadvertently left rounds in a revolver are misses unless there is an unfired round under the hammer, in which case it is a stage DQ. 10 second penalties include procedural penalties and minor safety violations. Procedural errors are simple, unintentional mistakes made as a result of brain fade or confusion where the competitor engages the stage in a way other than how it was intended. Procedural infractions include shooting targets in the wrong order. Revolvers are considered safe for movement in hand, while holstering, or while moving through the stage, and safe to leave the shooter's hands in the following conditions only. Hammer, fully down on an empty chamber, hammer fully down on an expended round. A revolver may not be originally staged in this condition, but may be restaged in this condition. Our stage instructions are fairly simple. Starting on either end, double tap sweep the five targets for 10 rounds. Our shooter, Dudley Do-Wrong, engages the rifle and shotgun just fine. He then moves to the pistol targets, and this is what you see. Dudley successfully hits the first target with a quick double tap. Dudley then engages the second target with two more rounds in rapid succession. Dudley then holsters his pistol, hammer fully down on the expended fourth round. He pulls his second pistol and hits the center target with one round. Dudley cracks off two more rounds on the fourth target and ends with a double tap on the last target. So, What's your call? The easiest and most obvious call is going to be the miss for the unfired round left in the first revolver. However, unlike leaving a live round in the action, magazine, or carrier of a long gun, there is no additional minor safety penalty for leaving the live round in the revolver. Additionally, as the live round was not under the hammer, there is no other safety call here to be made. But did Dudley come out of this with just a miss? Let's look again at how Dudley engaged the pistol targets. Rounds one and two successfully hit target one. Rounds three and four successfully hit target two. Round five successfully hits target three. Round six, which was meant as the second round for target three, hits target four along with round seven. Rounds eight and nine hit target five. Round 10 is still in the pistol when he holsters it. The appropriate call here is a miss for the unfired round in the first pistol and a procedural when he engaged the fourth target with his sixth round. In the event that a shooter like Dudley miscounts and holsters a pistol early, we can help them out of the situation. 
If we're able to catch Dudley and coach him through, it is permissible for him with the second pistol to double tap targets three and four and then single tap target five with the second pistol. He may then pull back out his first pistol and engage target five with the last round. Doing so would have left Dudley clean for the stage. Additionally, in the event that Dudley counted correctly, engaging all the rounds with his first pistol, but he had one fail to fire, the shooter's choice scenario would apply in this instance as well. The difference with that situation is that Dudley would have engaged the target with the round that failed to fire. Therefore, the procedural would not apply. We'll post a link to the shooter's choice video in the description below. Finally, and most obvious, later on, when we're sitting around the table telling stories about our stages that day, it's probably a good time to remind Dudley how to count to five. As calls go, we're probably not going to see this one that often. However, when it does happen, if we know how, we can try to help the shooter out of the situation. And if we're unable to help the shooter, as the TO, we have a responsibility to get the call right. Are you ready to grab your guns and head to the range? For a full listing of SAS matches near you, visit sasnet.com or our website, branchwaterjack.com, and we'll see you on the firing line.